Hi everybody. Um, I just grabbed a glass of water. I was so thirsty I needed a glass of water, but I hope this will be one of the most interesting discussions ever about farming. Um, and basically what we're going to talk about is primarily farming in Australia, but we're going to look at a totally new concept of farming on the North Pole and the South Pole or close to it as possible and looking at what's going on uh, in terms of farming even in outer space so the idea here is that um, if you look at this map we're gonna look at the farming in Australia and actually we're very close to the South Pole here um, perhaps not uh, you know there's also South America as well um, on the other side here you can see there's a whole kind of region and actually pretty viable farming area right in there as well but we're gonna look at australia someone brought up hey man look at australia i'd really like to hear what you have to say um but anyway sorry about this so this is such an important topic um you know it's just uh there's so much diversity in australia um there's the actually the coral reef if you've heard of the great barrier reef uh, up here uh, is one of the most important uh, regions on earth in terms of biodiversity and actually it's being lost um, but I would say it's very close to uh, uh, you know when when Lonely Planet if you're familiar with any of the travel guide books uh, they started the entire project by traveling up the coast of Australia and then heading into Southeast Asia so this region is extremely important um, in terms of biodiversity so uh, a lot of the birds and stuff fly along the coast. Um, if you pick up a bird at the store and you want to get like a parakeet or something like that, oftentimes it comes from Australia. Um, but the climate, uh, the other interesting thing about Australia is Tasmania here points to the magnetic south pole. So this part right here um, is very strange and mysterious, um, as well as getting a absurd amount of earthquakes uh, along this whole region. So there's this weird little island here that mysteriously points to the magnetic pole. So the magnetic fields are really interesting here. And also there's a lot of whales uh, that and actually fishing going on that is questionable. So uh, we're gonna look at farming, but it also involved the ocean um, and deep space. So basically, uh, you know, we're gonna talk about as many cool things as possible. Um, I'm going to try to start with something funny I want to show you. So take a look at this hilarious map. I'm going to zoom in here. Now what if the entire world was centered around Sydney, Australia? Um, there are other versions. If you center the entire Earth around the South Pole and Antarctica, this is what your map would look like. Um, this is called the Azimuth Equal equidistant projection south pole map there's also a north pole map um actually the north pole map is super awesome and interesting as well um remember every point is equal distant here you can see antarctica in the background here but actually uh for practical purposes uh you know we don't really live on antarctica um but we do live in australia in sydney so Actually, uh, in many of these diagrams, you can see Antarctica almost appears to be chasing Australia. You can see the tail here. Here, let me get you to the other map so you can see what's going on. So it almost looks like Antarctica is the South Pole is kind of even has a piece that could even fit right in there like that. So it's almost like it's chasing it. Uh, and then there's this really strange boot that boots all these earthquakes off into Fiji. And I'll show you the earthquake map in a moment here, but I just want to get you kind of thinking about the South Pole before we look into the details in Australia of what's going on with farming. So the absurd thing is that I read that Australia was one time almost 90% forest. So the deforestation, this is all desert now. There was once trees all over Australia um, I don't have the exact source for that, but you can look it up yourself and find out that things have changed a lot. But I just love this map because um, actually the first guy that I ever met that went to the South Pole from my local town traveled to New Zealand. And from New Zealand, he got training for a few weeks 
and then headed to the South Pole, which actually is on the opposite side here in the tip. Now, the interesting Urashura Way in Uruguay, I don't even know how to say it, but oftentimes people leave from Argentina and travel to the peninsula here. So there's basically a boat that goes here and then an airplane that sometimes goes from New Zealand. However, a lot of people don't really think about it, but guess what? Australia is is super important um, and in fact you notice that the nearest farms to the south pole although there should be farms down here in argentina it gets pretty cold there's a lot of farms in uh here near uruguay and bonus Aires, and a lot of that is meat turns out that i grew up next to my neighbor was doing cow farming in argentina i lived in chicago way up here but the vast part of their business was all the way down in argentina and actually argentina gets really close to guess what antarctica so believe it or not i grew up next to someone like this so that was really mysterious to me um all these years um that that has happened but we're gonna primarily focus on australia here but i wanted you to look at the full map and just get the context so actually there is a significant amount of farming and i don't want you to underestimate even one blue speck here even one farm can have an unbelievable impact to a town um i know that from personal experience i know some local farmers they work at the farmers market they help hundreds or even thousands of people with their just one farm and it is just a few uh houses worth of farms maybe even one house one lot uh, that they farm on so the unbelievable thing is is mexico shows almost no farming but if you've been to the grocery store you'll notice that a lot of your fruits and vegetables come from guess where mexico so the question here is what's going on in australia with the farming we're going to zoom in and try to find out exactly what's going on so this is adding some detail you can see some, compare i just wanted to compare this so you can see thailand is actually about the same and thailand has an unbelievable amount of power in terms of their finance and their food um, they are producing a lot of food and so australia as well uh, but you can see the mysterious nature of the farming industry in australia actually it's in the south here and it's not even along the coast here it's actually quite inland and near Melbourne in this area, right? And even you see some in Tasmania and quite a bit of farming actually in New Zealand. So we will try to discuss that a little bit, but I wanna zoom in even more to look at this in great detail. We're gonna pause the map here and so you can take a look at it. So again, the climate map is super important. Um, this green area actually is, is kind of farmable um this area that is yellow is definitely not farmable anymore uh there's a vast desert and it's called the australian outback but you can see there's a piece of the puzzle here that's being farmed uh and then some over here and actually this lighter green area is being farmed heavier more than the, the darker green and it actually is a little bit cooler in some of these areas but i'm going to zoom in here and try to get you the best map possible for this whole thing so hold on a second what about the soil so basically the main problem actually these days is there is water underground and you can even do desalination with the with the sea water so one of the questions is you actually need good dirt and good rivers so we're going to look at the river situation as well as the dirt now this orange dirt is actually very good dirt um, and then you can see some of this uh, lighter pink and green and areas these are farmable areas and you can kind of compare and find out and this light blue is actually all floodplain areas and that is actually farmable in many parts of the world so you can see australia actually has a lot of mountainous areas which makes it difficult to farm in so uh, i would compare this globally um, let me pause this for a second and show you the global map so this is an unbelievably awesome map um, i actually want to try to get all the way up to alaska on this map but you can see how much unbelievable good farmland is actually in south america and africa but that's because of the jungle so you have to kind of take some of these big pieces out and say you can't farm there and actually even the wildlife is a very big question here so 
basically maybe on the tip in some areas you actually wouldn't want to farm in Australia but you can see the vast area here uh, in Southeast Asia and even China and actually most of China's farming is going in the floodplain here but you can basically see that Australia has very little dirt area that it can farm in and yet wow look at the map they actually have quite a bit of farming going on um even compared to some areas there's actually maybe scary uh as much farming going on in australia as there is in all of africa right um, because this is high density farming here so it's quite unbelievable what they've been able to accomplish in australia um, so again, let's look carefully at this. So what I've been doing is actually studying specific farms. Um, one of my favorite things to do is to find a city that I think is awesome and then zoom in and find out uh, where the nearest farm is. So I'm going to try to finish this discussion as quickly as possible. Um, there is a lot of work to be done uh, and not very important talk to be done here. So we need to get to some actual uh, details as soon as possible and help some people out. So, but again, uh, what we're looking at is farming in very difficult areas. That includes Africa, right? So, and the South Pole and the Middle East. So when you start to talk about farming in Australia, you get a uh, kind of interesting biodiversity because you got the desert and you also have a whole bunch of other things going on. So let's look at the climate map really quickly here if i can find it sorry this is gonna take a moment to load so you can see that actually africa holds this is more desert in terms of the percentage of the whole entire area than in africa right africa you would say is about maybe a third to uh two-thirds percent desert this is maybe even half desert and there's also this area which is unfarmable in this lighter area so actually the farming region is surprisingly uh surprise is surprising here africa should have plenty of farmland but it does not for some reason and it needs help so the interesting thing is that east africa actually i've been looking at ways of working together with india east africa and western Australia and even Indonesia. So this whole area kind of can help each other out. Uh, similarly with you got uh, West Africa working with South America and even as far as the islands here. So Africa is actually right in the center of all this. Um, but Australia is actually on the pole. And again, looking at this crazy map, you would say that what if Australia was the center of everything? Um, I wanted to look at the uh, earthquake map so you can see what's going on there is an earthquake a recent earthquake showing here and some other you can zoom into this and see details about what's going on but let's get back to the the uh, truth of farming is that the climate really matters so you want to look at the soil map as well so i'm going to move this by the soil map and we can click between the soil map and the climate map and you can do that carefully and you can see that the soil does not match up with the climate um, that's because the river system is different. Now, what I would say is I have been, it has been impossible to find a good farm without a good river. So you can see all the rivers in Africa is unbelievable. But there's very few rivers here. Um, and yet uh, this part of Australia and even in here and right over here. So you can see that probably this western part of Australia was due to that river right there. And even this river here. Um, so when you look at the actual farming map you can see kind of compare that let's get to this map here and you can see so let's zoom in on the river map here and we can try to see precisely what's going on uh, it's going to take a little moment to load here sorry about this um, so you can kind of see here that there is they are trying to farm along those rivers and unbelievably 100 percent depends on irrigation nowadays so the rainwater is not adequate and even if you're farming in any place around the world you need to have irrigation it's getting really bad so you can't act. we're going to look at the rainwater maps and actually australia gets a lot of rain but it's not enough uh to do things even despite uh the rain now here is a overall picture unbelievably unfortunately australia is doing mostly meat 30 percent meat uh, and then you got beverage and dairy products and fruits. So 
it's actually great to see 5% in fruits and I terrible. I'm a vegetarian. I don't eat meat at all. So this is a big culprit uh, for corn and other things. So what happens is you end up eating the animal, but the animal has to eat other kinds of foods as well. So it ends up taking even more surface area because you do not only the food that the animal eats, but you eat the animal as well. So, and there's even another category of live animals, but fruits is pretty big in Australia, which is good to see. Um, let's look at this. This is the global export map. Now you have to set it to agriculture to see the agriculture. So you can see a lot of that is going to China and even the United States and even exported here to other areas. So it's important to remember that actually this farming picture is very significant in Australia. Remember, this is almost as much farmland as Thailand. Um, so uh, there is farming seasons in Western Australia and you get North, Southwest and Queensland and different areas. So you can basically see what's going on. It's in the Southern Hemisphere. The planting season starts in about September or October. Um, you can see September and then the growing season starts in December, which is kind of our uh, Christmas, right? And then the harvesting starts right around here in March or April or even February, right? So right here. Um, so this is super cool. You can get this by clicking crop calendars and they have it for all over the world. Um, you just click Australia here. You can get New Zealand as well. So very helpful and important. Now I wanted to look at this because I was shocked at how much fishing, the problem of fishing is and where, who's causing this in the Pacific Ocean. So there's a lot of fishing going on. We need habitat um, and it looks like maybe some of this might be Australia's fault. If you look at the uh, pathway here, it looks like it's coming off of the coast here and basically maybe even uh, directly responsible for Australia and even Japan uh, being a huge problem here with the fishing. So this shows you the import export routes. Remember that most of the food is actually that is shipped imported or exported is by boat so the boat pass really do matter and you can zoom in and see the details about that now here is one other quick map looking at the uh, basically forestry and remember this is all barren now grassland and you see some floodplains in here as well but basically this is the agriculture in this color the kind of uh, I guess uh, yellow brownish color so and then you have some shrub land and some other things but actually this gives you a pretty good picture for the agriculture situation in Australia and I definitely recommend that now here is the population map for the area you can see the major cities and actually Australia being Melbourne and even Perth out here being very critical in terms of large populations as well as close access to the farm. And this would be their main farming city right there. So I grabbed all the data for uh, Australia just to double check that um, with the uh, data from Harvard Atlas of Economic Complexity. It does not match up. So basically wheat and sugarcane show as huge here. Um, I uh, am always happy to see something other than corn on the top of the list here. So you can see that actually Australia is doing pretty good and you do a log graph to see some more details so you can kind of see that this is within a factor of 10 or 100 between each other so you can see all the different foods. And avocados, for instance, are very healthy food. Um, also have some fat, you got some apples, uh, rice. I like to track rice really carefully. Uh, on the crop explorer and here is another map looking at a different version of Australia to see the farming land so I like to compare multiple data sources to see um, where the farming is going on and you can see again this is this so let's just go through these to make sure I got everything now last but not least I'm gonna go through the uh, whole yearly rain thing so you can see the rain in the north is pretty heavy there it gets even more heavy in January um, and we're talking about almost a full meter or more of rain. Uh, now you start to see it come off the coast near Brisbane there, April, kind of moving down to further south, right? And then now you see May even getting all the way down to this coast here, a line here in Tasmania, uh, July, uh, getting pretty good rain on the south. Now, the scary part about this is this lighter color means you 
almost have to irrigate. You're getting absolutely no rain in this area. So in August, you know, basically you're talking about irrigation. Now you do see some rain in here, um, but quite honestly, uh, it really depends. And actually in the United States, these lighter areas would definitely not be enough water because you cannot guarantee the rain in some of those regions. So you can now see some rain in New Zealand there. And then um, November getting even more. And then we'll go back to December and you can see uh, kind of going back in a loop here. Uh, but I definitely like the rain maps. Um, if you need, you can also use the Google non Google Earth version and grab the picture and zoom in here. Um, and this is the FAO data and some other things. Um, I unfortunately I have to talk about this last bad part. Um, so Australia is actually a major problem here. Um, okay, so uh, just, man, this is the last part of this whole uh, discussion. You can see Australia is basically eight football fields per person. Uh, definitely look at this data carefully. I uh, can't emphasize the importance of how important it is to study farming in Africa. What they're doing there is 100% correct compared to the rest of the world. Australia is actually doing the wrong thing because they have a lot of farmland and the people are consuming eight football fields worth of food a year and then even wasting about 30% of that. You can look at the sustainability uh, numbers on that um, as well anyway so I'll end this discussion um, but uh, certainly it is just the tip of the iceberg of the conversation in terms of the polar farming and outer space farming so you know how we farm uh, here in Antarctica uh, could determine the future for everything for our entire civilization um, believe it or not, um, farming in outer space may be the key to everything. And farming in this cold weather could be very important. And even on the North Pole, like that's why Alaska farming becomes very important in the United States um, because of its close proximity to the North Pole. Um, so definitely um, take a look at farming around the world, um, but take a careful look at Australia. It will definitely benefit you. Uh, because of so many different factors um, and uh, it will help everyone. Thank you so much. I really hope this has helped you. Uh, let me know um, what you think. Australia is a very interesting place to farm and I'd be glad to discuss very specific details and go through a lot of stuff with you. Um, please uh, let me know what's going on and I will try to help you out. I hope this has helped you. Thank you so much. See you later. So again, I really hope this has helped you. Um, I'm sorry um, if I rushed anything. Um, I'm trying to look at so many different things. Um, but again, there's just a, a lot of stuff. What I would say is that you can grab uh, the population data. This is the map, the agreement, global cloud plan that we looked at. Um, definitely mess with the uh, opacity and you can start to see precisely where the farmland is uh, on the map. Um, so look at that. Uh, and then you can also add the population one here. I turned it off, but you can see uh, the population actually uh, come in here. <laughs> wow, look at Southeast Asia. Um, so that's an unbelievable amount of population. So Australia is actually not very populated, um, but has a lot of farmland. So super important to think about that population question. So actually one new piece of the puzzle, Australia may hold a key to farming for all of Asia in terms of the population question, right? That is way too many people, it looks like, um, but um, who knows what we're trying to do in terms of farming. So when you pull out the farming, it's basically more people than farming. I don't know how they do it. So super important to look at, um, and I hope this discussion has helped um, highlight some details uh, for everything. Please let me know about questions that you have or ideas that you have, suggestions and things, and I'll do my very best to try to help you out. Thank you so much. Um, 